holiness, becoming a vessel of honor. Hi everyone, I hope you're good. Um, it's Maria again, all the way from Windy South Africa. Um, I hope you're well. Um, today I decided to speak on the message of holiness. It's amazing how differently people interpret holiness. Like immediately you think you say holiness, people want to think of clothes. And then it will be then the, the debate will start right there. Then it will be a debate on how long a scot should be, uh, on, how, on how high or how low the top should hang from the neck. You know, it's a lot. It's a lot. And it's amazing that holiness, it seems to take a different definition for the modern woman. But you also have to pay attention and understand that we also serve a God who does not change. And God is conservative. Okay? Now, in terms of holiness, um, what I've learned, especially when dealing with new babes in Christ, is not to, to drum it, to drum it up. Uh, to drum it hard on them. Although I grew up in a church where I got saved, we were told in, in the church where I got saved, if the, the pastor's wife were to see you dressed inappropriately, she would literally walk all the way to you and tell you that the problem with your outfit is this and this and that. And this is the last time I see you wearing this in this church. And to hear it from her, it's like visiting someone's house and they speak to you like that. You know that it means that for you to keep coming, you need to, to fix that, okay? And coming from her as an adult, like, you, we, we, like we, 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 we got that, okay? So, yeah. So the upbringing plays uh, a, very, a very big role as well. But I think above the upbringing is just a person's own interpretation of holiness, their walk with God, their closeness with God, and their understanding of God and the things of God. You know, one thing that's beautiful that God has given us is a conscious. That is one thing we cannot debate on. That is the one thing, that is the one card that an unbeliever can play against believers, okay? That is the one thing. One thing that Africa had prided itself for, for decades, in fact, for centuries, was its modesty, was its, 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 its culture, its tradition, and I do not mean in the, in the rituals and the occultic, the black magic, white magic. I'm not talking about that nonsense. I just mean in the, in the, in the, in the, in a good way. Okay. The good side of the coin. I understand there's two sides to a coin and I'm deliberately concentrating on the one side of the coin for the sake of this video. And I am saying that I am aware of the other side of the coin but I'm concentrating on the good side. Amen? So Africa, for the longest of time, had prided itself in being conservative and its simplicity and the culture and tradition has made things to, to, to stay that way for the longest of time. Um, it is, I remember growing up, we were able to associate certain things with being African and certain things with, with the Western world of, of the Westerners. And a part of that was us, our, the modesty. And like I said, holiness is not just limited in terms of clothes. 
for me, I feel holiness is a, it's a mentality. Because what I'm talking about also, I realize how it is not just limited to clothing. Growing up, there was also that thing that we dress this way and the Westerners dress that way. We dress up. They reveal more. It was more like they walk, it was said they walk in nakedness. You know, they walk in nakedness. And we were taught, or depending on a home you are from. And also with the indigenous, uh, indigenous, indigenous, well, indigenous churches, tribes, cultures, they all were able to center us back to what is appropriate. But with the African child growing and becoming more and more modernized, the, the uh, traits of thinking that were adopted. Now, the problem was, like I said, there's two sides to a coin. With what an African child brought in from the Western world, it was just not to fix the, that which was bad on the bad side of the coin. But it was also, unfortunately, to corrupt that, which is beautiful in the, in the, in the, in the African, in the African world, in the African thinking and doing of things. Amen. So the subject of holiness, I find it uh, very deep, very vast, very broad and very sensitive especially because I feel when it is addressed, it is strictly addressed in clothing. And I feel it's a failure to understand that it goes all the way up here. And if it's something that has to be adjusted, it needs to be adjusted here. If it's something that has to be changed, it, it, it has to start up here. And it's, uh, it's very bold to be able to go to someone and say, you dress like a harlot. You, you walk in nakedness. You do not dress like a Christian. Nothing in your clothes says you belong to Jesus. For a newborn babe, that can be a little bit too much. But then again, it will always go, go back to the circle, to the country, to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the group of people. Like, how do they think? How do they look at life? It will always go back to that. With this topic, I decided, you see how relaxed I am? I just, I'm relaxed like this because... Even I have become a product of the, the African child that got modernized. Okay? That got modernized. After becoming a Christian and having to have to learn to balance the two by taking what is good and rejecting what is bad. Because there is a lot of good in the culture, in the tradition, there is a lot of good. There really, really is. So now, the Bible says that the older women must teach the younger women how to dress. I do not know how this can apply in a, in a, how this can apply in a society where the older women themselves have lost the path. This is when the Holy Spirit comes in. You cannot get away from your conscience. And you cannot get away from the Holy Spirit. And the Lord speaks in different ways to, to correct a person. The Lord can correct you. Your conscience can convict you, okay? I separate the, con the conscience from the, from the Holy Spirit 
because even before you are saved, because you are from the Lord, there is a light in you. There is uh, there is there is that light which is of which is of God, which is from God, which says to you that this is not it, which says this is not right, and this is outside of religion. It's just the, that light, that which we have, that is from the Lord. And as a Christian, now you have the conscience and the Holy Spirit. And if still there is no correction, that is when the Lord will involve a person as a third. So it's the, your conscience is the Holy Spirit, now the Lord will call a person to try and correct the situation. There are certain things that society has cemented so well into the minds of the people. And it will take just more than just a few teachings to correct, to adjust, and, and even to change. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. <coughs> and even to change, amen. <coughs> So, um, <clears throat> as a single woman, your own definition of holiness is one thing. And when you get married, then your husband will present to you <laughs> another definition of holiness. As a married woman, the husband... It will be there to, uh, to, your husband is your covering. Your husband is your shield. Your husband is your protection. Your husband is that authority that is over you, according to the Christian faith. Okay? My teachings are in line or I go by the teachings of the Bible, the doctrines of the Bible, okay, so that I do not become in conflict with other people of other religions. Amen? With your husband as that covering, his covering is the Lord Jesus. So your covering who is your husband, whom you are supposed to be submitted to, will also be bringing in his, his opinion on what is holiness. And he will be able to say that dress, no. That top, <laughs> no. And here we are, Praying so hard to God for kingdom marriage this, kingdom marriage that. Are you aware that this man is coming with changes? Are you ready to take them? It's like a woman who's praying and asking God for the fruit of the womb. And they've never been, uh, they've never mothered a child before. They do not know that this cute bundle of joy doesn't sleep. And it's going to be this torture for the next three months. And that is usually the case for most babies. And she's just happy and she's going to go through it. Okay? And there's also other new challenges that just grows by the... As the time grows, as the child grows... There's new challenges, you know, and things to adjust to. So this kingdom marriage, you are so, you are so, I don't want to use the word desperate. You are so, I don't want to use desperate. I don't want to use thirsty. I don't want to use hungry. That you are so waiting for, so waiting for. It has to do with the man. 
He's from a family. He's got his own interpretation of holiness. As you come <clears throat> into this marriage, you are putting on a plate, you cook for him and you cook on a plate that which you feel you're good at. Like you'll be dishing him your best, giving him on the table. He's going to eat <coughs> and when he's full with a toothpick <laughs> on his mouth. He'll also take a nice, beautiful, clean plate on it. He'll also put things there for you. Okay. And what will be what will he be presenting to you? He'll be presenting to you the ideas, his thoughts, his feelings, his beliefs. And it's supposed to all be, uh, y'all are supposed to be compatible, things are supposed to be cohesive, things are supposed to run parallel because y'all belong to God. That's why y'all are kingdom, right? And then it will be time for this beautiful modern bride to take that which is on the plate are you ready for that or do you plan to speak to your kingdom spouse before the before the fact because <laughs> people change their minds all the time you marry a man is like this this year the following year he decides, well, I was thinking, <laughs> you know, after two years, well, I was thinking. After five years, well, I was thinking. Well, you are submitted to him, aren't you? Or are you going to now go to counseling over that? As a single, how do you deal with the clothing factor as a woman? How does fashion identify with you? How do you identify your fashion? Is it better to work on your wardrobe now than to wait for him to come? Because when he comes, you do not know how much of it he will change here and change there because now the beautiful thing about kingdom men is that they belong to god they are not uh they are not the they're not coming to rule with an iron fist it's a partnership when it is true that the bible says wife submit ye, ye submit yourself under your husbands but the bible also does say submit ye one to another the bible also does say that and if i'm going to submit myself to church to the elders to the people at work as um, authority is required then it is it also makes sense but also at home for things to work together another person's voice has got to be heard And for people to understand too, that as much as uh, blame, wants, blame can be easily put on the Western thoughts and the Western way of thinking and doing things, that the mess that perhaps the the Western man has a, a role to play in it as well. Amen. Think of it this way. And this is for the men, for the men. Think of it this way. If your wife has to now dress these very long dresses that sweep the floor, that usher in her king um, to her chambers, uh, that's all, uh, that's the kind of clothing she wears. And then tomorrow, y'all go to the restaurant. And then 
there's a, a lady that's in an hourglass dress, a red number to top it off. And then she rises up. And then you, the husband, invol involuntarily <laughs> looks. <laughs> now, what is her interpretation of the situation? I don't even know if I'm going to post this video or not. <laughs> this is something else. This is something else. Okay? Yeah. There's actually a two part to this. I think I'll end the first part to this. I think I've just made my point. That the Christian men, as much as you want to put in the your expectations to say, my woman of God, my queen, uh, my woman, I would love for her to look this way. How will she perceive or interpret? Or if, if, actually, let's leave her out of it for a while. And you, being the, the anointed, called man of God, you powerful man of God, when you are out there and you see the women who dress the way you don't want your wife to dress, do you look? Let's say she's not there and then you see someone and then you just look, you know? Now there's different looks. There's a look of approval, there's a look of, and then there's a look of lust. There's different kinds of looks. And now let's just say she just happened to be in the vicinity. She, you didn't know she was going to be there. But then she's looking at you the entire time. And after the woman moves, and let's say the woman is between you. And as soon as she, look, she, she, she gets out the way you look up and you see your wife looking straight at you. Why do you think it's her interpretation? Why do you think it's her interpretation? So let us be aware of the roles that men can play to help to, uh, to rectify the ills of society. There's so many social ills that society, has, that society breeds, continually breeds, that it just literally, it, just, it will just take God. But I can say from the, from the healthy standpoint of things, a woman of God naturally would just know just how much is too much, you know? But then again, we'll all go back to the debate on like, what is too much? What is too much, you know? It'll always take us back there. It'll always take us back there. Some things can only be sorted out by God because the Lord does correct. And there are women in the church whom you look and you know in your heart that this one, the Holy Spirit convicted them. And they still left the house anyway. You need to understand that there's people like that. But now also we as the Christian women, those whom God called. I mean, God has called us to, to start ministries. I feel, let us try to work closely to what God says. Let us, let us uh, work closely to hear what, how the Lord directs us about it. Because there are things that you'll see and you'll say like, okay, uh, okay, this, this is out of control. This I would never, I can, I, like, as a, as a, as a, as a woman, I feel it's okay if you want to be scandalous, to be scandalous at home for your husband. But there are some, when you have to go out, especially those who are called to be at the forefront, I believe that there is a, a call to a correction. But I feel that if it ever comes to a point where several people are ever to mention an outfit, and to correct it, I feel like, or to point out a fault in it, I feel like 
it, it it's only wise to listen like me let's say now i just uh i'm i'm here on youtube oh no i'm here with the youtube um with the youtube channel and i post a video and i was wearing a top and people say well you're wearing a top but it was pretty much see-through and it was inappropriate and i would be like yeah that was like inappropriate that was like too much um and i feel usually the best people to give advice for me personally i feel like the men now for a man who's not your man to say that's a bit too revealing that's a bit i feel like it's worth taking into account i feel that is worth taking to account but like i said the lord does correct us as women at home sometimes it is us who can decide that no i can tone it down with this or no it is not as bad it all just depends on our relationship with god amen yeah i think i've spoken long on this i'm ready to go on the other side of it now with holiness with with the with the power of god with the anointing of god to to uh, for god to do the most in a person's life the lord the lord uses vessels we are the vessels but the 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 holier the vessel the the holier the vessel the more the lord can use that vessel anointing cannot be bought grace there, there's a, a level of grace that comes from purity and holiness and let this be an encouragement to the women who are very conservative because I understand that we are conservative in different ways. I consider myself conservative. And then I will meet someone else who will be who's just whose definition of conservative. Um, to me, it's 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 in another level. So there's different levels of conservative. Like me, you see um, how I'm wearing this uh, a sleeveless dress. I'm not just in South Africa. I'm in Limpopo, one of the hottest provinces in the country. So your girl is trying to keep herself ventilated. I'm still a denim girl, you know, and I still need myself ventilated. And for someone else, just this showing may be too much. Um, like I said, it also goes back to the different homes that we come from. In some, in some instances, some women can wear something and get away with them because they're slimmer. But someone who's a bit curvier, it may start to look a little bit scandalous, a little bit out of place. It will always also goes back to the shape and the size of the of of the of the person. But then again, we have the Holy Spirit with us, okay. But um, what I do know, and what I wanted to share and to encourage the the women that are very conservative, if you feel. You are more conservative than me then um and you are following my youtube channel do not change your style after me you do not mimic me you do not like even if you were to see a person as a role model do not go to the point where the person takes the where the person takes the the place of jesus he is that role model that we look up to amen so if you feel you are more conservative than i i am then do not change that and become and become like me do not change that if you feel you're not comfortable wearing wearing a a, a dress like this then do not start wearing it because you saw me wear it let the holy spirit convict you in the way that he convicts you and let him convict me in the way that he convicts me like I said, in some instances, such such might be said because of the size again. There are women whom it would be said like because of the arms are bigger, it just looks more decent when they are covered. But then someone else might say, that's just discrimination. And someone else will raise their hands and say, here goes the westernization. Like we'll never finish with the Zations, guys. So all I wanted to say is, Holiness is just a state of mind. Once your 
the, the way you dress, the, the way a person dresses says a lot. The way you dresses shows us how you think. It shows us how you perceive the world. That's exactly what it says. That's exactly what it says. Because if a woman, let's, let's, let's leave the, let's get out of the church and look at the, a growing child. Let's look at a teen who starts to wear skimpy clothes. Now, this is a child, this is a girl that has come to herself and understands that, okay, she's a young woman. And now, being a young woman, she now has got this interest and a new liking to the, to the boys. And she wants to be noticed. Do you understand the frame of, of mind this girl is in? So your clothes very much say what, what stages you are in the Lord and what's happening in your life and how you perceive the world, okay? And how you perceive the world. Now, if I'm going into a meeting and I go in, let's say I'm going into a meeting and um, let's say I'm going into a meeting and I'm late. The kind of clothes that I'm wearing, are they the kind of clothes that which I come in, people are going to look at me and say that's a woman of God or is it the kind of clothes that gonna, people are going to look at me and be like, she's late because she just wanted to show off. And what is the, the, the showing off that we're talking about? Perhaps the, the cleavage might be too much. Okay. And again, someone might be saying, what is too much? Our level of holiness might not be the same. Might not be the same. Okay. I personally do not believe in, in, in cleavage period. But then I, I can say that because I do not have a large bust. I do not have a large bust. Okay. Um, I'm just, I'm just medium. According to me, I call myself a medium. Okay. So I can very much get away with things. Um, but there are some women when they were to wear the very same top that I'm wearing and it would look, uh, it will look different. But there's some other women it doesn't matter what top they wear, the, the, the chest is there. The chest is just there. It all, again, it will boil back to the size of the, of the person. And it's not even as to do with weight. It has to do with the size of the assets. It will do with the size of the assets. And it, it is what it is. It is what it is. One lady can wear a dress. It can be perceived as okay. Okay, and then another lady who might uh, who might be gifted with with more assets, it might just seem a little bit scandalous. Okay, um, like it is what it is. You know, some things are just hard to like to like correct. But I believe that, um, like my mom once told me, she said it actually sometimes has to do with the body size. There are just some things that just don't look right on curvy women but which skinny women can get away with and i pretty much agree and sometimes it also boils down to the age there's just some things that you just stop doing when you get to a certain age amen and also there might be some hourglass dresses which might say pencil dresses um are, are, are cute we might agree on them so long as they are not too tight but there are some women just like i said the woman with the bust there are women who've got consequences. The ATM. Okay. The ATM means the African trademark. Okay. Uh, I do not want to swear. Um, I do not want to sound rude. But let me see. I have to say it. And I do not mean to offend anyone. But a woman, women have got a bigger behind. It doesn't matter what they wear. It is something that's going to stand out. It cannot be reduced. It cannot be... It doesn't matter what they wear. It's something that is just out there. So we must always remember that it will always, uh, at the end of the day, it boils down to what the person's conscience says, what the Holy Spirit says, um, and what the husband says. And for us not to uh, try, try, and for us, 
to try not to be especially with the women that have got assets and i feel more grace should be given to those women because even with the clothes their, their clothes it's just hard for them to be able to find the right fittings okay so i feel for the women that are tiny the women that are skinny they can very much get away with with a lot but the women that are medium the women that are curvy the women that are chubby and the women that are big and the women that are plus plus all the way up it can just be uh um hard so let us uh, let us let us pray on the matter <laughs> and give grace to them that need grace but where correction needs to be made i feel it will be made because people will speak i mean people will speak okay people will speak um to close this i wanted to say let us go back to holiness and holiness is more than just clothes holiness has to do with how you wear it has to do with how you carry yourself now if you're wearing something that's so 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 tight that you can't even bend there's no practicality in it it's a that's a yeah it also leaves us it also leads to the to the questioning like how does this person reason like how is your reasoning like how how how, how did you come to this in, in, as as you got as you got into this dress what was the reasoning what was the reasoning amen so yes it is what it is it is what it is so um yeah it is what it is i do not want to uh, judge or to make anyone feel judged but i feel it will always boil down to the size and the skinny and the tiny women will always get away with things it's like the more the assets, the harder it is to um, to adjust, and also to also extend grace and understand that, as much as the skinny and the tiny women are able to get into those uh, outfits and still look look cute, the the curvy women also want to look attractive, and when a, a curvy woman is uh, is is getting into the clothing that may be perceived as as what as attractive it might be called now as being too sexy so it's 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 a lot it always boils down to size but you know we've got jackets we've got coats we've got scarves there's always things that we can do to tone down and to do this and to do that and i feel like with the ministries that are coming and god raising these new women we as women will be able to to um to to sort this out even among ourselves but i believe very much so with the help of the husbands i believe very very much so with the help of the husbands because i believe that the love of a woman and her passion uh is is for her husband i mean if your husband is happy then it shouldn't really be too much of a bother about how other men out there see you. Not that you dress for other men, but there's many people who've been married who tell you that before I got married, I never wore this, but I got this because my spouse liked, I never wore much dresses, but I got dresses because my spouse loved dresses. So you see, or a man who said, well, I never was being into shirts. I was always your t-shirt kind of girl, but t-shirt kind of a man but because my wife loved t-shirts now ended up getting me some shirts you know so we influence each other okay so there's some serious social ills but the lord is helping to correct little by little little by little but what i do know is the holier the vessel the more the lord can use because a person you may look and feel that the person is not pure and you'd be surprised that that person may be may have the purest of hearts and the person that looks conservative may just be jezebel in the flesh reincarnation of jezebel from the bible on the rail and if a person is dressed a certain way 
to be going up and down a million times up and down the aisles of a church that that's how that's what i'm saying it is all up here and the best person to judge is god the best person to judge is god so if god has chosen someone and said this is the person that i chose we will have to respect god that god saw something in that person it means in their heart there's really no ill intent although we may feel that okay this person was a certain way if they can just adjust this and this and that that will be on us but father has already chosen the woman god has already chosen the person okay but like i said watch a lot of these things are going to be very much sorted out when the partners are going to come in things are going to level out things are going to level out beautifully beautifully because there's so many social ills that society is breeding even now as we speak um, thank you guys. God bless.